It is said that a picture speaks a thousand words. So I would like to share with you one of my favorite pictures of all time. This is a picture of when I had a chance to be a stay-at-home dad for just a couple of months. I had graduated seminary and was waiting for my appointment back in Missouri and waiting for Melissa to finish her job in, um, in Texas. And so Cameron and I, as he was a baby, got to stay at home. And this picture is a picture of Cameron and our dog, Carmel. Carmel loved Cameron and loved people and it was a great opportunity to remember that time uh, that we got to be together, um, the three of us, just hanging out um, and being dad, son, and dog. Today is October 13th. Today is Cameron's 22nd birthday. And on October 13th, 1999, at 9.07 in the morning, he made me a dad. One of the greatest experiences and joys of my life have been watching my boys grow up and knowing and understanding the experience and the responsibility of helping them to grow into the young men that they are supposed to be. Certainly, we've gone through a lot of ups and downs and difficulties and lots of joys and lots of wonderful things that have happened in the times uh, that Cameron has been alive. He has lived um, in multiple places and has been resilient all along. But I want to tell you another story about Cameron and his growing up. When Cameron was about three years old, I was pastoring in a community called Willard, Missouri, just outside of Springfield. And it was around Christmas time, and Melissa and I were working on sending out Christmas cards to our congregation. And we'd gone over to the church office to look up some uh, addresses and to label them and then eventually take them to the post office. It was a, a day that was only us uh, on, a, I think it was a Saturday. Uh, we were there and uh, um, working on this and Cameron was with us and Melissa and I were taking turns watching him and filling the uh, Christmas cards out. And the office where the, the church office was right across the hall from the sanctuary. And so uh, Cameron would head into the sanctuary, we'd play around in there and then we'd come back um, and then uh, I was trying to help and watch him at the same time and look up and he's gone. And so I go frantically looking around the church and uh, realize that he had gone back into the sanctuary and he was kneeling at the altar rail like I'm doing right now. And I asked him, what are you doing? And he said, pray. He had seen me pray in church and so he understood uh, that posture and that position. And so he was being like dad which is kind of humbling, but he was there kneeling at the altar rail, and I knelt down before him and with him, and we prayed together. After finishing that prayer, I took him by the hand and told him we needed to go back in the office to help mom. And we got to the door, and he stopped, and he pulled me back, and he said, more pray, more pray. Well, that's always stuck in my mind. As a reminder of what we should be doing, in all of our lives, more pray, more pray. The book of 2 Thessalonians tells us to pray without ceasing, to give our honor, our glory, and our requests to God, to pray. So I want to invite you today to pray. Certainly, pray for my son. Pray a prayer of thanksgiving that he's in the world on his birthday. If you have a chance and you know him and you know, have a contact number for him, send him a message. Say happy birthday. If you don't have that, just send up a prayer to God, thanking God for sending Cameron into the world. I know I'm grateful for that. And I also invite you to pray for all kinds of other things. Pray for your family. Pray for your church. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your community. Pray for all our leaders and our, um, our country. Pray for Christians around the world. Pray for the church universal that we may be more about what God wants us to do and to be. So I invite you today to have more pray. God bless you. Have a great day.